Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Certainly our praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Lord of all that exists And He is deserving of it Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wa mursaleen May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise the rank and Send peace upon the best of the prophets and the messengers Nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family and all of his companions. And as for what follows, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward the leadership of this masjid, the administration and the leadership of this masjid for their good thoughts about their brother. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as our brother Abu Abbas said, to allow me to speak words of benefit and wisdom and to remove the uqda from my tongue any any not in my tongue so that you can understand the words that I want to read for you from the great Imam Shaykh al Islam Ibn al Qayyim Rahmatullahi alayhi. Ibn al Qayyim wrote a tremendous book that is called Miftah Dar al Sa'ada, and he's the key to the world of happiness, the key to the world of felicity, meaning the key to the paradise. And it is a book about the two functions of the heart, which are Al-ilmu wal-irada And the ability to know what is right from what is wrong And the ability to want what is beneficial for yourself And to not want what is harmful for oneself And in this book he has a very lengthy section about The benefit of or the benefits of knowledge Of religious knowledge And from these benefits he has a section about the ideal mentality of a Muslim how a Muslim is to think and the importance of a person engaging in a tafakkur, a person engaging in contemplation about the good of this world and the hereafter and how to get it and what is harmful in this world and the hereafter and how to avoid it. He says, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him. And this is for anyone who wants to reference the book. It is Al-Wajhu Thalith wal Khamsun Ba'd al Mi'ah. And he, it is the 153rd aspect that he mentions from the benefits of knowledge. He says, مَا ثَبَتَ عَنْ بَعْضَ السَّلَفِ أَنَّهُ قَالَ, ت... أنه قال تَفَكُّرُ سَاعَةٍ خَيْرٌ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ سَتِينَ سَنَةٍ He said that some of the salaf, it is authentically reported from them that they said that a person engaging in beneficial contemplation and he thinking about what will benefit them for a short period of time may be more beneficial for them than devoting their self to worship for 60 years. Than devoting their self to worship for 60 years. And this statement, the meaning of it is that any a person by contemplating over any what is beneficial for him any, and being present in mind and thinking about the paradise and the fire and the names and the attributes of Allah and the greatness and the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the likes of these things and he is better for him then engaging in and devoting himself to worship for a lengthy period of time without that and without doing those things while his mind doesn't have the same type of focus and concentration he said وَسَأَلَ رَجُلٌ أُمَّ الدَّرْدَى عَنْ عَبِدْ دَرْدَى بَعْدَ مَوْتِهِ عَنْ عِبَادَتِهِ he said, a man asked Umar Darda, and here Umar Darda is his younger wife. She was called Umar Darda as Tughra. She was from the scholars from the Fuqaha of Damascus. And he married her as an orphan girl. He married her, he raised her as an orphan girl, and he married her after she reached the age of, uh, the age of puberty. And he taught her the religion of Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, and she used to sit in the back of the Masha Jami' in Damascus, teaching the people their religion, teaching the people the religion of Allah wa Taala, and instructing the people. She was a scholar, and she was asked about her husband Abu Darda after his death, the great companion, the scholar from the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She was asked about his worship. فَقَالَتْ كَانَ نَهَارَهُ أَجْمَعْ فِي نَاحِيَةٍ يَتَفَكَّرْ she said that he would spend the entirety of his morning in seclusion, contemplating deeply and thinking deeply. 
He will be a person who will take a good portion of his time throughout the day. I need to think about what is beneficial for him and to contemplate over what is beneficial for him. And he mentions a number of similar statements from the Salaf al-Salih about the importance of a tafakkur, of a person thinking about what is beneficial and contemplating over what is beneficial and moving his heart and motivating his heart with such thoughts. And from those statements is the statement of Al-Fudal ibn Ayyad, the great scholar from the third generation of Islam who said, أَتَفَكُّرُوا مِرْآتٌ تُرِيكَ حَسَنَاتِكَ وَسَيِّئَاتِكَ and that contemplation is a mirror that will show you your hasanat and your sayyat. And it is a mirror that will show you clearly your good deeds and your bad deeds. وَقِيلَ لِإِبْرَاهِيمِ And it was said to Ibrahim and Nakha'i, إِنَّكَ تَطِيلُ الْفِكْرَةِ فَقَالَ الْفِكْرَةُ مُخُ الْعَقْلِ And it was said to Ibrahim and Nakha'i, that you are a person تُطِيلُ الْفِكْرَةِ And you think... For long periods of time, you think for long periods of time, any, or you think and contemplate and reflect for long periods of time, فَقَالَ الْفِكْرَةِ And he said contemplating and reflecting is the marrow or the brain or the any life-giving force of the aql. And it is the core of intelligence. Sufyan ibn Uyayna, rahmatullahi alayhi, kathiran ma yatamathal, he used to frequently recite these lines of poetry. كانت له فكرة ففي كل شيء له عبرة. That when a person, when a man, and he contem- uh, contemplates and thinks frequently, then he will find a lesson in every single thing. The great Imam Ibn Rajab al-Hambali, rahmatullahi alayhi, he said in his book, Lata'if al-Ma'arif, he said, فَكُلُّ شَيْءٍ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَهُوَ مُذَكِّرٌ بِالْآخِرَةِ he said that everything in this world reminds a person of the hereafter. Everything that a person comes across in this world, every scenario that a person finds himself in, it is as such that it can remind him of the hereafter. And then he mentioned I mean, the changing of the seasons, the falling of the leaves and these sorts of things. I and mean, a person can find in everything that they come across in this world something that will remind them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of the hereafter. Ibn Qaymi says, وَقَالَ الْحَسَنَ الْبَصْرِي فِي قَوْلِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ And Hassan al-Basri, he said about the statement of Allah, سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ سَأَصْرِفُ عَنْ آيَاتِ الَّذِينَ يَتَكَبَّرُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ That indeed I am going to turn away from my ayat. I am going to turn away from benefiting from my clear evidences and my clear verses. الَّذِينَ يَتَكَبَّرُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ those who show arrogance in the earth without a right. And he, those who show arrogance in the earth without a right, they will be deprived and prevented from benefiting from the religion of Allah and from the evidences of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Hassan al Basri, he said about this verse, he, say, he said, Amna'uhum atafakura fiha. He said, meaning that I, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will prevent them from contemplating over the ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would deprive them of being able to benefit from contemplating over the creation of Allah and the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, likewise in Hassan al-Basri, he says, تَوْلُ الْوَحْدَةِ أَتَمُّ لِلْفِكْرَةِ وَتَوْلُ الْفِكْرَةِ دَلِيلٌ عَلَى تَرِيقَ الْجَنَّةِ He said that a person being in seclusion for a long period of time is something that is more guaranteed to help him collect his thoughts, if you will. وَطَوْلُ الْفِكْرَ دَلِيلٌ عَلَى تَرِيقَ الْجَنَّةِ And in his being able to collect his thoughts for a long period of time, and to contemplate and so on and so forth, then it is an evidence that will direct a person towards the path of paradise. And he says likewise, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he said, الْفِكْرَ تُو فِي نِعَمِ اللَّهِ مِنْ عَظَمِ الْعِبَادَةِ That... Thinking about the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and contemplating over the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from the most magnificent forms of worship. And he said on one occasion a man asked Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak or rather Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak he said on one day to some of his students to some of his associates and companions وَخَرَّاهُ مُفَكِّرًا 
And some of his students, they had saw him in deep contemplation and reflection. They said, Aina Balant. They said, where did you reach? You were thinking deeply. What point did you reach in your contemplation? Qala Sirat. He said, I reached the Sirat. Meaning he was thinking about the bridge that extends over the hellfire from the earth to the brink of, and the outskirts of the paradise on the day of judgment. And this is where his contemplation had caused him to reach. وَقَالَ Bishr Ibn al-Harith al-Hafi Rahmatullahi alayhi The great Imam of the Sunnah The peer and the friend of Imam Ahmed And the teacher of Imam al-Barbahari Bishr Ibn Harith al-Hafi He said لَوْ فَكَّرَ النَّاسُ فِي عَظَمَةِ اللَّهِ مَا عَصَوْهُ He said if the people was to contemplate over the greatness and magnificence of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala They would never disobey him They would never have disobeyed him These are tremendous statements To show you what the Salaf used to Preoccupy their minds with and preoccupy their thoughts with. And so this is a mi'ad for us. It is a scale for us to compare ourselves and what our minds are preoccupied with. And what the minds of our families and our children are preoccupied with. And to say, where are we from them? Is this how our minds are? Are we affected by what we know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hereafter and the likes of these affairs? He said, likewise, Abdullah ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما he said ركعتان مقتصرتان في تفكر خير من قيام ليلة بلا قل he said that a person praying two moderate two rak'a two units of prayer of moderate length في تفكر while having adequate contemplation and reflection خير من قيام ليلة بلا قل it is better for him than praying the entire night without his heart being present, without his heart being focused. He says, likewise, Abu Sulaiman al-Darani, rahmatullahi alayhi, he said, al-fikru fi dunya hijabun an al-akhirah. That a person thinking about this world, meaning in a way that is not conducive to benefit, a person preoccupying himself with obsessing over this world or thinking over this world, hijabun an al-akhirah. And it is a veil that will block him from the hereafter. وَعُقُوبَةٌ لِأَهْلِ الْوَلَايَةِ وَالْفِكْرُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ يُورِثُ الْحِكْمَةِ وَيُحْيِ الْقُرُوبِ And it is something that is a punishment for those people that want to be the allies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْفِكْرُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ While thinking about the hereafter, يُورِثُ الْحِكْمَةِ وَيُحْيِ الْقُرُوبِ It's something that will cause a person to inherit wisdom. And he will bring about wisdom within the heart of a person and will bring light to his heart. He says, likewise, Abdullah ibn Abbas, رضي الله عنهم, he said, أتفكر في الخير يدعو إلى العمل به. He said that a person contemplating and thinking about goodness, about what is good and beneficial, is something that will cause him to cont- is something that will cause him to act upon the goodness. This was stated by Al Hasan al Basri. He said, المؤمن يحسن ظن بربه فيحسن العمل. That the believer he thinks well about Allah subhanahu wa taala. And so he behaves well. وَالْفَاجِرُ يُسِيءُ ظَنَّ بِرَبِّهِ فَيُسِيءُ فِي الْعَمَلِ And the fajr, the wicked person, he thinks poorly about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he behaves poorly. And so Ibn Abbas, he said, the person who thinks about the khair, and he thinks about what Allah revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he thinks about the affairs of creed. And he thinks about the affairs of ibadah. And he thinks about those things that are from the surukiyat and the akhlaq of the salaf. And the characteristics and the qualities and the traits of the salaf of salih, the early generations from the sahaba wa man ba'dahum, and those after them. And this will cause him, it will summon within him a desire for acting upon that goodness. He says that al-Hasan al-Basri, he said, Inna ahl al-ilm. لا يزال يعودون بالذكر على على الفكر وبالفكر على الذكر ويناطقون القروب حتى نطقت بالحكمة. He said that people of knowledge never cease motivating their heart with contemplation, with tadakkur, and with contemplation and taking lesson and reflection and reflection upon taking lesson, and they. يُنَاطِقُونَ الْقُرُوبِ They speak to their hearts. 
And they speak to their hearts. They have conversations internally. They, and they reflect and they contemplate. And they internalize what they know. حَتَّى نَطَقَتْ بِالْحِكْمَةِ until they, until they find that their hearts are able to speak with wisdom. And so the people of knowledge, they reflect upon that which is beneficial until they are able to utter wisdom. وَمِنْ كَلَامَ شَافِي رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ أَسْتَعِينُ عَلَى الْكَلَامِ بِالصَّمْتِ وَعَلَى الْإِسْتِنْبَاطِ بِالْفِكْرَةِ He said, وَهَذَا لِيَانَ الْفِكْرِ عَمَلُ الْقَلْبِ وَالْعِبَادَةَ عَمَلُ الْجَوَارِحِ وَالْقَلْبُ أَشْرَفُ مِنَ الْجَوَارِحِ فَكَانَ عَمَلُهُ أَشْرَفَ مِنْ عَمَلِ الْجَوَارِحِ He said from the speech of Imam Shafi, rahmatullahi alayhi, he said that you should seek the assistance of silence over your speech. وَعَلَى الْإِسْتِنْبَاتِ بِالْفِكْرَةِ And you should seek the assistance of al-fikra, of contemplation, to be able to deduce benefits and meanings from the text of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet He said, and this is because contemplation is the action of the heart. And the outer acts of worship are from the acts of the limbs. وَالْقَلْبُ أَشْرَفُ مِنَ الْجَوَارِحِ And the heart is something that is more noble than the limbs. فَكَانَ عَمَلُهُ أَشْرَفُ مِنْ عَمَلَ الْجَوَارِحِ He says, so the meaning of these statements is that the Motivation of the heart, and that a person using his heart to contemplate over what is useful for him and advantageous for him, and he has something that is more noble than the actions of the limbs in general. He says, Rahmatullahi alayhi, فَالْخِيرُ وَسَعَادَةُ فِي خَزَانَةِ مِفْتَحُهَا تَفَكُّرُ He said that all goodness and all felicity and happiness and success is found in the khazana. And it is, it is found in a chest, it is stored away in a chest, miftahuha tafakkur, that can only be opened up by contemplation and reflection, by having the correct mentality. فَإِنُّهُ لَبُدَّ مِنْ تَفَكُّرٍ وَعِلْمٍ يَكُونُ نَتِيجَةَ الْفِكْرِ وَحَالٍ يَحْدُثُ لِلْقَلْبِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ الْعِلْمِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مَنْ عَلِمَ شَيْءً مِنَ الْمَحْبُوبِ أَوْ الْمَكْرُوحِ لا بد أن يبقى لقلبه حالة وينصبغ بصبغة من علمه وتلك الحال توجب له إرادة وتلك الإرادة توجب وقوع العمل. He said that all goodness and happiness is found, all goodness and happiness is stored in a chest that can only be opened up by contemplation and reflection. He said by contemplating and reflection a person arrives at knowledge. He arrives at knowledge. Because what is found in the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, they are alfad, wal alfad qawali bil maani, and they are words that are the modes of their meanings. And the only way that a person can benefit over what Allah revealed to the Prophet wasallam, is understanding the correct meanings of them. By having an incorrect understanding of what came to Allah and the Messenger wasallam, is ayn al halak. And he is the epitome of destruction, the key to all devastation. As Ibn Qayyim, he said in his book, as sawaiq al-Mursala, he said, وَمَمْ تُحِنَ الْإِسْلَامُ بِمِحْنَةً إِلَّا سَبَبُهَا التَّأْوِيلُ That Islam and the people of Islam have never been subjected to a calamity and a trial, except that the cause of it is misinterpretation of the religion. And so, Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says here, so a person must contemplate and reflect, meaning over the meanings of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, And by doing so, he will arrive at knowledge of the meanings. He said, وَحَالٍ يَحْدُثُ لِلْقَلْبِ ذَلِكَ الْعِلْمِ So by contemplating and reflecting first, he will arrive at the result which is the correct meanings and the correct knowledge, certainty, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this will bring about the result. He said, وَحَالٍ يَحْدُثُ لِلْقَلْبِ ذَلِكَ الْعِلْمِ And he have a state of being of the heart that comes as a result of that knowledge. Meaning that there is nothing in the religion that is theoretics. There is nothing in the religion except that it requires action. The entire religion, everything of knowledge requires action. He said, and so there is 
for every affair of knowledge there is a hal. There is a state of the heart that comes about as a result of that knowledge. That comes about as a result of that knowledge. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مَنْ عَلِمَ شَيْئًا مِنَ الْمَحْبُوبِ أَوَ الْمَكْرُوحِ For verily any person who knows of something that is liked or disliked, beneficial or harmful, لَأَبُدَ أَنْ يَبْقَ لِقَلْبِهِ حَالَةٌ Then this will leave a certain effect upon his heart, a certain state within his heart. وَيَنْصَبِغَ بِسِبْغَةٍ مِنْ عِلْمِهِ And it will leave an indelible mark that is the result of that knowledge upon his heart. وَتِلْكَ الْحَالِ تُوْجِبُ لَهُ إِرَادَةٍ And this state of his heart, of desiring what is beneficial, and having a رَغْبَ عَنَ الشَّرْ And having a desire to be protected from evil, and a disinterest in what is harmful for him, and so on and so forth. He said this state that is imprinted upon his heart, تِلْكَ الْحَالِ تُوْجِبُ لَهُ إِرَادَةٍ And this will bring about a desire, and a himma, and a desire, an ambition, and a a want for what is good and a want to be protected and uh, distanced away from what is harmful. He said, وَتِلْكَ الْإِرَادَةَ تُوْجِبُ وُقُوعَ الْعَمَلِ He said, and this desire that comes as a result of that, this desire that comes as a result of that, it necessitates, and it necessitates the occurrence of the action. It necessitates the occurrence of the action, meaning it causes him to act. It causes him to act. فَهَاهُنَا خَمْسَةُ أُمُورٍ So between thinking and contemplating and the action, there are five things involved. There are five things involved. The first is الفكر. And the thought itself, what a person is thinking about. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala in one of his, in his book Al-Fawaid and in his book Al-Jawab Al-Kafi, the book that is called Adda'u wa Dawa, the disease and its cure. And he explains that the heart of a person, the mind of the person, his heart, and it is like a mill. It is like a mill. They used to, and he take grain and put it in a mill, and they would have a donkey going around in a circle attached to it. And the strength, the energy of the donkey will grind up the grain, and it would turn into fine powder, so on and so forth. And now we have blenders. And now we have blenders, right? With so many, with so much power and, and creating so much friction and so on and so forth. So the mind of a person is like that, he said. It is like a mill or it is like in modern day terms, it is like a blender. And whatever you throw in it will be the result. So a person, he wants to make a smoothie. You know, or a person, he wants the juice. See, people, they start juicing and they want to throw everything in the juicer. Right? If they could throw some bark in the juicer, they would throw some bark in the juicer. Throw all kinds of stuff in the smoothie, right? They don't follow any, any muasafat. There's no type of, you know, recipe or anything connected to it. They just freestyle it. Or throw everything in the blender, right? Person might throw some gravel in the blender and he says, you know, this has some, you know, some, some carbon in it. You know, I might, you know, get some energy out of this. Whatever you throw in it is going to be the natija. So likewise is the case with the mind. Whatever comes into the eyes, whatever comes into the ears, whatever the person is thinking about, is going to come out on the limbs, is going to come out on the tongues. He said, Rahmatullah Ali, in his book, Adda'u Adda'u, likewise, he said, Al Qurub Kal Qurur. Then the hearts of people, they are like, they are like pots. They are like pots. Tagli bi mafiha. They boil over, spilling out the contents of what is inside. And you can taste the flavor of what is in a man's heart due to what spouts off of his tongue. What comes out of the tongue of a person? This is found in the statement attributed to Uthman. He said, مَا أَصَرَّ أَحَدٌ سَرِيرَةً قَدْ إِلَّا أَظْهَرَهَ اللَّهِ عَلَى صَفَحَاتِ وَجْهِهِ وَفَلَتَاتِ لِسَانِهِ That no person ever conceals something, a secret state within themselves of good or evil, except that Allah will expose it on the slips of their tongue and the expression of their face. When Abdullah bin Salam, radiallahu anhu, when he saw the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for the first time, who remembers what he said? When the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, arrived at Yathrib, the city of Al-Madina, and Abdullah bin Salam, he said, I heard the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first thing I heard from him, he said, he said, أَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامُ وَفْشُ السَّلَامُ وَصَلُّ بِالْلَيْرِ وَالنَّاسُ لِيَمْ تَدْخُلُ جَنَّةَ رَبِّكُمْ بِالسَّلَامُ 
He said, the first thing I heard him calling to was good character when he said, and he feed each other and spread the salams and pray in the night while the people are sleeping you enter the par- and you will enter the paradise of your Lord in safety. He said, and I saw his face was not the face of a kathab. He said, He said, I saw his face was not the face of a liar. Meaning he could see upon the characteristics, the facial expression of the Prophet ﷺ, that the Prophet ﷺ was upon the truth. This is something that is from the effects of knowledge. It has an effect upon the demeanor of a person. It has an effect upon his countenance. It has an effect upon his behavior, upon his speech, upon his actions, upon his family, upon everything that is around him. And it starts with al-fikr. It starts with contemplating and reflecting over what has been revealed to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And contemplating and reflecting over the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise as inshaAllah will come to see. He says, the first thing is al-fikr. وَثَمَرَتُهُ وَثَمَرَتُهُ الْعِلْمِ He says, and as a result of a person contemplating and they will arrive at the result of knowledge, of certain knowledge. وَثَمَرَتُهُمَا الْحَالَةُ اللَّاتِي تَحْدُثُ لِلْقَلْبِ He said, and the fruit of thinking and contemplating over what is beneficial in arriving at certain knowledge is the state that occurs in the heart. The result that occurs in the heart. We know the statements of the Salaf, the statements of Masruq ibn Abdul Rahman, the statement of Rahmatullah alayhi, the statement of his teacher Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ خَشْيَةُ اللَّهِ That knowledge is nothing but the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowledge is nothing but the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mas'ud, he said, كَافَ بِنْ مَرِي كَافَ بِنْ مَرِي أَنِي اغْتِرَارًا أَنْ يُعْجِبُهُ عَمَلُهُ وَنْ يُعْجِبُهُ عِلْمُهُ He says, enough of a man to be deluded. That he is astonished by what he does, or he is astonished by his knowledge. He said, and is enough, كَفَ بِنْ مَرِي عِلْمًا أَنْ يَخْشَى اللَّهِ Is enough of a man to have knowledge, that he fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the knowledge causes him to, causes him to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a tremendous lecture that was given years ago by a shaykh, Dr. Salih ibn Abdul Aziz, and a shaykh, Hafizullah ta'ala, that is called, and he minhaj al Muslim or Minhaj al Muslim fit tafakkur. The methodology of how a Muslim thinks. The methodology of how a Muslim thinks. Where he said that many of the students of knowledge, that they involve themselves fi shudud al masail. They involve themselves in strange issues. Any person they want to learn the ruling about is it permissible or impermissible to eat a mermaid if you find a mermaid. If you were to be fishing at sea and catch a mermaid. Is it permissible to eat the mermaid? Hey, people, they, they, they find all sorts of strange issues. And they talk about all sorts of strange issues. And he said, you find some students of knowledge that they focus upon and sense of that which will motivate their hearts and move their hearts. And then they focus upon those things that are from shudud and masayah. And from these strange issues, or the weird issues of the religion. He said, wal awla bihim wal ahra. And what is better for them, or what is more primary for them, and important for them, is to focus upon those things that will soften their heart, those things that will cause them to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those things that will bring about within them any, a change for the better. And a change for the better that will remove the sicknesses from their hearts, that will be an obstruction between them and knowledge. And this without a doubt is the case. And a person, and he, by learning his religion, by learning his religion and understanding his religion, he, his intention is to cure himself from the diseases of his heart. And this is something that is found here in the words of Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala later in this lengthy passage. He said, and so, the first thing you have is contemplation that results in a person having certain knowledge, that results in the state of the heart that comes as a result of contemplating over that knowledge. al-irada. And the result of that, the fourth thing is that irada. And it has an effect upon his intention. We know the statements of the Salaf. And he, where some of them they said, and he, إِنَّمَا دَخَلْنَا فِي هَذَا الْأَمْرِ وَلَيْسَ لَنَا نِيَّةِ And we entered into this affair and we had no intention one way or another. 
some of the salaf as young children or prepubescent children or as adolescents, they will be paid for the number of ahadith that they married, the, uh, the number of ahadith that they memorized, the number of ahadith that they memorized, and your father or an uncle or a parent, they will say, for every hadith that you memorize, I'll give you such and such and such and such. He said, we entered into this affair, and we had no particular intention one way or another. فَأَبَ الْعِلْمُ إِلَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ لِلَّهِ But the knowledge refuses to be for anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us society. This is something that is tremendous. And it has an effect, it has this type of effect upon his heart. And it has therefore an effect upon his irada, upon his intention. وَثَمَرَتُهَا الْعَمَلِ And the fruit of that is his action. And the fruit of that is his action. And he drives a person to being determined to do the good and to having صدق العظيمة and to having true and genuine determination for what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love to Allah. He said, وَهَذَا يَكْشِفُ لَكْ عَنْ فَضْلِ تَفَكُّرِ وَشَرَفِهِ وَأَنَّهُ مِنْ أَفْضَلِ عَمَالَ الْقَلْبِ وَأَنْفَعِهَا لَهُ حَتَّى قِيلَ تَفَكُّرُ سَعَاتٍ خَيْرُ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ سَنَةٍ He said, and this clarifies to you from the statements of the Salaf, the superiority of reflecting and contemplating and the nobility of it, and that it is from the most noble of actions of the heart and the most beneficial of them, to the extent that it is said that thinking for a sa'ah, for an hour or a short period of time, خَيْرٌ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ سَنَةٍ may be more advantageous for a person than engaging in worship, devoting himself to worship for an entire year. فَالْفِكْرُ هُوَ الَّذِي يَنْقُرُ مِنْ مَوْتِ الْغَفْلَةِ إِلَى حَيَاتِ الْيَقْضَى He said, contemplation and reflection Having a proper mentality is that which removes the person from the death of forgetfulness and heedlessness to the light or to the life of al of al yaqada and he of being and aware and awake. Wa min al makari al mahab and from those things that are disliked to him and to those things that he will love. Wa min al rakabati wal hirsi ila zuhdi wal qanaa and from a person being over ambitious for this world and greedy over this world to having. And he is zuhd, and he to his avoiding what will harm him in the hereafter, while qana'a, being satisfied with what is sufficient of this world, wa min sijnat dunya ila fadail akhira, and remove him from the tight prison of this world to the expanse of the hereafter, wa min dhiq al jahli ila sa'at al ilmi wa rahbihi, and remove him from the tightness and constriction of ignorance to the vastness of knowledge, wa min marad al shahwati wal ikhlaad ila hadhi al dar. إلى ش إلى ومن مرض الشهوة والإخلال إلى هذه الدار إلى شفاء الإنابة إلى الله والتجافي عن عن دار الغرور. He said to remove the person from the disease of harmful lust and greedily clinging to this world to the cure of constantly turning to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and being disinterested from this world of deception. ومن مصيبة العمى وَالصَّمَمْ وَالْبَكَمْ إِلَى نِعْمَةِ الْبَصَرِ وَالصَّمْعِ وَالْفَهَمْ عَنِ اللَّهِ وَالْعَقْلِ عَنْهُ And to remove him from the calamity of blindness and deafness and dumbness concerning his religion to the blessing of internal vision and being able to listen attentively and understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us of. وَمِنْ أَمْرَاضِ الشُّبُحَاتِ إِلَى بَرْضِ الْيَقِينِ مَثَلَجُ الصَّدْرِ and by contemplating over beneficial knowledge, a person will be removed from the diseases of ashubuhat and of doubts concerning his religion to the kunas of certainty and the thalaj al-sadr, and that which will bring comfort to his chest. وَبِالْجُمْلَةِ فَأَصْلُ كُلِّ طَاعَةٍ إِنَّمَا هُوَ الْفِكْرِ He said in a summary, the core and the beginning of every act of obedience is found and resides within al-fikr, within the mentality of a person and how a person thinks. وَكَذَلِكَ أَصْلُ كُلِّ مَعْصِيَةٍ إِنَّمَا يَحْدُثُ مِنْ جَانَبِ الْفِكْرَةِ فَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانِ يُصَادِفُ أَرْضِ الْقَلْبِ خَالِيَةً فَارِغَةً فَيَبْضُرُ فِيهَا حَبَّ الْأَفْكَارُ الرَّدِيَةِ He said, and likewise, the root of all disobedience comes from the direction of harmful thinking. For verily the shaytan finds the ground of the heart, and he finds ard al-qalb, and he finds the surface of the heart khaliyat al 
he finds a person and he, that he is not occupied with anything benefit and there is nothing uh, beneficial and there is nothing beneficial planted within it it is empty and so he plants within it the seeds of destructive thinking he plants within it the seeds of destructive thinking and how much more is that the case in our time compared to the time of Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala in the time of mass media and mass entertainment and pop culture and so on and so forth Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah alayhi he said the shaitan he plants within the heart that he finds empty that is not preoccupied with busy knowledge that is not and he busied with what will benefit it of contemplation over what is left to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he plants the shaitan he plants and he the seeds of destructive thinking فَيَتَوَلَّدُ مِنْهُ الْإِرَادَاتُ وَالْعُزُومُ فَيَتَوَلَّدُ مِنْهَا الْعَمَلُ And there comes as a result of that all sorts of impulses, all sorts of desires, all sorts of determinations for what is harmful and destructive. فَيَتَوَلَّدُ مِنْهَا الْعَمَلُ And there comes as a result of that that gives birth and rise to الْعَمَلُ And to the actions of a person, it reflects in the actions of the person. فَإِذَا صَادَفَ أَرْضَ الْقَلْبِ مَشْغُولَةً بِبَضْرِ الْأَفْكَارِ النَّافِعَةً فِيمَا خُلِقَ لَهُ وَفِيمَا أُمِرَ بِهِ وَفِيمَا هُيِّئَ لَهُ وَأُعِدَّ لَهُ مِنَ النَّعِيمِ الْمُقِيمِ أو العذاب الأليم لم يجل بضره موضعاً. He said, however, if the shaitan he finds the surface of the heart is already busy, it is already occupied with having planted within it beneficial thoughts, a beneficial mentality pertaining what the person has been created for, and what he has been ordered with by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and what he is being prepared for by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and what is being prepared for him of the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this everlasting, or the painful torment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَمْ يَجَلِي بَذْرِهِ مَوْضِعًا When the person's mind is consumed with these things, and busy with these things, why he was created, what he has been ordered with, what Allah is preparing him for, and he what is being prepared for him of either punishment from Allah or reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everlastingly. لَمْ يَجَلِي بَذْرِهِ مَوْضِعًا Then the shaitan will not find a place to plant his seeds within the heart of a person. وَهَذَا كَمَقِيلًا And this is as was said in these lines of poetry used to be quoted frequently and you will find them frequently mentioned in the writings of a shaykh ibn Ubaz rahmatullahi alayhi and many of the scholars. أَتَانِ هَوَاهَ قَبْلَ أَنْ أَعْرِفَ الْهَوَى فَصَادَفَ قَلْبًا فَارِغًا فَتَمَكَّنَهُ That desires and harmful impulses came to me before I even knew what desires were. This is something that a shaykh ibn Ubaz rahimullah ta'ala used to mention about the youth, these lines of poetry. And ibn Uqayyim rahimullah ta'ala, he mentioned these lines of poetry in his book, Rawlat al-Muhibbin, and in the garden of the Muhibbin, and of those and who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he mentioned them as regards al-ishq al-muharram, and he forbidden lust, forbidden lust. And he, that the youth, and he has desires, atani hawaha qabla an a'rif al hawa. And he, that desires, for what is harmful came to me before I even knew what desires were. Fasadafa qalban fariban fatamakkana. And they found my heart empty. And some say khaliyan. They found my heart empty. Fatamakkana. And so they took root, they took control of my heart. فَإِنْ قِيلَ فَقَدْ ذَكَرْتُ مَنْ فِكْرَ وَمَنْ فَعَتَهُ وَعِذَمَ تَأْثِيرِهِ فِي الْخَيْرِ وَالشَّرِّ فَمَا مُتَعَلَّقُهُ الَّذِي يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يُقَعَ عَلَيْهِ وَيَجْرِي فِيهِ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَتِيمُ الْمَفْصُودُ مِنْهُ إِلَّا بِذِكْرِ مُتَعَلَّقِهِ الَّذِي يَقَعُ الْفِكْرُ فِيهِ وَإِلَّا فَفِكْرٌ فِي غَيْرِ مُتَفَكَّرٍ فِيهِ مُحَالٍ He said if a person was then to say so you already mentioned the importance of al-fikr and your thinking correctly and the benefit of it and the tremendous effect of the thoughts and driving a person to good or evil. What is the muta'allaq? And what should a person's thoughts be connected to? What is the mentality of the person therefore? الَّذِي يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يُقَعْ عَلَيْهِ وَيَجْرِ فِيهِ That a person's I mean, what should a person be thinking about and what should his mind be busy with? فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَتِيمُ الْمَقْصُودُ مِنْهُ إِلَّا بِذِكْرِ مُتَعَلَّقِهِ اللَّذِي يَقَعُ الْفِكْرُ فِيهِ Because in order for us to benefit from this information, we need to know what a person is to think about. Otherwise, it is impossible to think about nothing. 
He said, Al-fikr fa fikrun fi ghayri mutafakkarin fihi muhab. And it's impossible to just think about nothing. There has to be something a person is thinking about. So what exactly? Be specific. What is the person to think about? He said, Qila. He said, that we say in response, Majra al-fikri wa muta'allaquhu arba'atu umur. That what a person, that what a person thinks about, when his thoughts are connected to our four affairs. Ahaduha ghayatun mahbubatun. Murad al And what he is thinking about at any given moment, if his thought is indeed an intelligent thought, is one of four things. It is either ghayatun mahbuba. It is either an objective, a goal that he has, that is something that he wants, that he likes, that he loves, that he wants to happen. Ghayatun mahbuba, murad al And he is something that is an objective, a goal that he has, that he loves, and he wants to have it. وَالثَّانِي The second, تَرِيْحٌ مُوصِلَةٌ إِلَى تِلْكَ الْغَايَةٌ The pathway, the method, the pathway for him to arrive at that objective, for him to arrive at that goal. So the first is something that he, that he believes is beneficial for him, and he loves, and he wants to acquire that thing, he wants to obtain that thing. The second is the path, the method, the means by which he can reach that goal. Athalith, the third, Madharratun, Matlubul Idam, Madharratun, Matlubatul Idam, Makruhatul Husul. The third is the opposite. And he's something that is harmful to him, that he wants not to happen, and that he would dislike occurring, and he wants it not to exist. Matlubatul Idam, and it's something he doesn't want to happen, he doesn't want to exist. And he dislikes its happening. Al Rabiq, and lastly, is a Tariq al Mufti, Ilayha al Muqi or Alayha. And the path that leads to that thing that is harmful, the course of behavior that leads to that which is harmful, the means, the method, the path that leads to that which is harmful, and muqi alayha, that causes the person to fall into the thing that is harmful. He said, فَلَا تَتَجَاوَزُ أَفْكَارُ الْعُقَلَى هَذِهِ الْأُمُورَ الْأَرْبَعَى He said, the thoughts of intelligent people do not surpass these four matters. They do not, they do not go beyond these four matters. وَأَيُّ فِكْرٍ تَخَطَّاهَا فَهُوَ مِنَ الْأَكَارُ الرَّدِيعَى he said, any thought that a person has that is not within these four categories of what is beneficial and how to get it, and what is harmful and how to avoid it. He said, any thought that surpasses these four things, then it is from destructive thinking. And it is from the imagination, the, from the imaginings and false hopes of, of people. It is from false hopes and from futile thought. كَمَا يُمَثِلُ الْفَقِيرُ الْمُعْدِمُ نَفْسَهُ مِنْ أَغْنَى الْبَشَرُ He said, like a poor person who has nothing, presenting himself as though he is the wealthiest of the people. Like some of the musicians that are here. <laughs> a person is the poorest person on the face of the earth and he has delusions of grandeur. He's talking about, he's writing song after song after song about I need the car that he drives, the cars that he drives and the women that are chasing him and so on and so forth. And he doesn't have anything. He doesn't have anything. He said, like a person who is faqir and mu'din. I need a person who is presenting himself, he's very poor and he presents himself as though he is the most wealthy of the people. وَيَأْخُذُ وَيَعْطِي وَيُنْعِمْ وَيَحْرِمْ As though he has the ability to and he take or to give or to and he impart kindness to others or impart any blessings or impart wealth to others or prevent others like he's in control of affairs وَكَمَنْ يُمَثِلُ الْعَاجِزُ نَفْسَهُ مِنْ أَقْوَى الْمُلُوكُ وَهُوْ يَتَسَرَّفُ فِي الْبِلَارِ وَالْرَعِيَّةِ He said I like 
a person who is helpless, and a person who is helpless presenting himself as being from the most powerful of kings of the earth, as though he has control over the affairs of the land and the people in the land, the subjects of the land. ونظائر ذلك من أفكار القروب الباطلية التي من جنس الأفكار من جنس أفكار السكران والمحشوش والضعيف والضعيف العقل. He said, and thoughts that are similar to that, that are delusions of grandeur. A person is hallucinating, and he who he is. He said, and thoughts that are similar to that, and he of the minds of people, and he that, and he القروب الباطلية. And he, the minds of people who have a futile mentalities, and whose thoughts are like the thoughts of drunken people or people that are high in hashish, وضعيف العقل, and he a person who is mentally, and he who has a weakness in his mental capacity, a person who is, and he mentally challenged. Allah, Allah. Ibn Qayyim he continues. He says, فالأفكار الرديئة. هي قوت الأنفس الخسيسة التي هي في غاية الدناءة. He said that this that these destructive thoughts that are outside of a person thinking and goal setting for himself I and mean, what is beneficial for him and how to get it and what is harmful for himself and how to avoid it. He said that any thoughts outside of these these أفكارٌ رديئة. These destructive thoughts they are قوت الأنفس الخسيسة. And they are the nutrition, they are the nourishment, they are the daily ration that which a person and he thrives upon those souls that are خسيسة, that are worthless, that are lowly. التي هي في غاية الدناءة. And at the at the lowest of levels. فإنها قد قنعت بالخيال ورضيت بالمحال. Really, such such persons and they are satisfied. With that which is any of the nature of hallucinations, any that which is any imagined, they are any people who live within the confines of their own imaginations. وَرَضِيَتْ بِالْمُحَالِ And then they are pleased with them. They are pleased for themselves with that which is impossible. ثُمَّ لَا تَزَالُ هَذِهِ الْأَفْكَارُ تَقْوَى بِهَا وَتَتَزَايَدُ حَتَّى تُجِبَ لَهَا أَثَارًا رَدِيَةً وَوَسَاوِسَ وَأَمْرَاضَ بَطِيئَةَ الزَّوَاءِ He said, and then a person does not cease harboring such thoughts until they become stronger and stronger and they increase in frequency within him until they have destructive effects upon his person and they cause waswasa within him they cause the whisperings of his nafs and of the shaitan and they cause within him all sorts of illnesses all sorts of diseases that are very slow to leave from the person. They are very slow to leave from the person. There's a tremendous statement by Al-Imam Al-Dhahabi, Rahmatullahi Alayhi al Hafiz Al-Dhahabi, in his book, Siyar Alama Nubala, commenting upon one of the statements of the Salaf, where he mentioned that the souls of people, the unfus of people, and he are given to a great deal of ghurur. And, he, that, and he, the majority of people, they are extremely delusional. They are extremely delusional. Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala, here he has alluded to something that we see in the times in which we live. And you see the people obsessed with any what we mentioned before of any false entertainment, any of any music and movies and any video games, Muslim children playing video games for 10, 12 hours a day, any ruining their minds, destroying their intellect, so on and so forth. And then what comes as a result of that? The result of that is seen 5, 10, 15 years later. He said that the result of this is something بَطِيَةَ الزَّوَالِ And it is very slow to leave and to vanish and to dissipate from a person. And a person, they see the effects of that is long-lasting within the person. And this is something that without a doubt exists in Western societies where mental diseases, psychological illnesses, they are rampant and they are frequent and abundant. Everywhere you go, he said. Wa ida kana al fikru nafiu la yakhruju an al aqsam al arba'a alati dakarnaha. He said, in as much as that beneficial thinking and a proper beneficial ideal mentality, al fikru nafiu, and a beneficial way of thinking, la yakhruju an al aqsam al arba'a alati dakarnaha. In as much as that 
There is nothing a beneficial thinking that departs from the four categories that we mentioned. فَلَهُ أَيْضًا مَحَلًا وَمَنْزِلًا Then there are two applications for these four things. And there are two levels that they are applied to. أَحَدُهُمَا هَذِهِ الدَّارُ وَالْآخَرُ دَارُ الْقَرَارُ So these four categories, they apply to thinking about what is and he connected to them in this world and in the world to come. In this world and in the world to come. Meaning a person thinks about what is beneficial for him in this world that he wants and how to get it, what is harmful for him that he wants to avoid in this world and how to be protected from it, and how to avoid it. And he thinks about what will harm him in the hereafter and how to avoid it and what will benefit him in the hereafter and how to get it. He said, فَأَبْنَاءُ الدُّنْيَا الَّذِينَ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَنَاقٍ عَمَّرُوا بُيُوتَ أَفْكَارِهِمْ يَتِرْقَ الْأَقْسَامِ الْأَرْبَعَةِ فِي هَذِهِ الدَّارِ He said, the sons of this temporary world, and the people who, and he have made this world what they believe is their only abode, and the people who are not working for the hereafter, the disbelievers, أَبْنَاءُ الدُّنْيَا And they are those, the sons of this world, they are those, and he, الَّذِينَ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَنَاقٍ And those that have no khalaq, meaning no nasib, no portion of the hereafter, عَمَّرُوا بُيُوتَ أَفْكَارِهِمْ بِتِلْقَ الْأَقْسَامِ الْأَرْبَعَةِ فِي هَذِهِ الدَّارِ And they have, and he filled their minds, they have filled their minds with these four categories pertaining to this world alone. They want peace and security and prosperity in this world, and what they think will bring, about, bring it about for them in this world. And that's all they think about. And that's all that they think about. فَأَثْمَرَتْ لَهُمْ أَفْكَارُهُمْ فِيهَا مَا أَثْمَرَتْ And that has brought about for them the fruits that has brought about. And there is some good that has come about by them thinking about what is good in this world and how to get it, what is harmful in this world and how to avoid it. And there is a great deal of harm that comes about from that. And as much as they don't have the basis of the correct belief system, any belief in Allah and the hereafter and so on and so forth. And so they want the good in this world by skipping past Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by forgetting about the hereafter. And this uh, without a doubt will bring about destruction for them in this world and in the hereafter. He said, وَلَكَنْ إِذَا حَقَّتْ الْحَقَائِقْ وَبَطُلَتْ الدُّنْيَا وَقَامَتْ الْآخِرَةِ تَبَيَّنَ الرَّابِحُ مِنَ الْمَغْبُونَ وَخَسِرَ هُنَالِكَ الْمُبُطِلُونَ He said, however, when the realities become clear and this world goes out of existence and the hereafter is established then the person who was prosperous who profits will be distinguished clearly from the person who, who has cheated himself and he and the people of falsehood at that time will be from the evident losers and the Sons of the hereafter, the children of the hereafter, those that are working for the hereafter, trying to return back to their original home. Ibn Qayyim, he says, the sons of the hereafter, and the alladina khuliqu laha, those that have been created for the hereafter, then they occupy their minds with these four categories pertaining to the hereafter. How to get what is beneficial in the hereafter, and how to avoid what is harmful in the hereafter. So they think about the punishment of the fire, the punishment of the grave. They think about ahwal al-qiyamah, and the calamities of the day of judgment and the hardships of the events of the day of judgment. And they think about how to avoid suffering and how to avoid loss in the day of judgment. And they think about the blessing of Allah in the hereafter and the peace and the security that they want in their graves and on their plane of judgment and in the paradise itself. And they think about how to get that. And this is what they busy and occupy their minds with. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala says, وَنَحْنُ نُفَصِّلُ ذَلِكِ بَيْعَوْنِ اللَّهِ وَفَضْلِهِ He says that we're going to explain that in great detail by the assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by His bounty. And this is where we say we will conclude بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى because and what he mentions here and he from here on out is a great amount of detail. But this gives us a basis hey, to look at what we are building our 
families upon and our communities upon. I mean, one of the great Imams of the early Tabi Tabi'een, Aun ibn Abdullah, he said, as is found in the Musannaf, and the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, he said, Kana a Salaf Salih. He said that the Salaf Salih, Ida al Taqaw, and he, when they used to encounter one another, Yusi ba'aduhum ba'adan bi thalathi kalimat. They would advise one another with three statements. Wa ida rabaw, and when they were apart from each other, they would kataba ba'aduhum ila ba'adin bi tilka al wasaya. They would write the following advices to one another. They would say, Man aslaha sariratuhu aslaha Allahu ala niyata. Whoever corrects what is inside of him, Allah will repair and correct what is external. Wa man amila li akhiratihi kafahu Allahu dunya. And whoever works for his hereafter, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice him pertaining to the dunya. وَمَنْ أَصْلَحَ مَا بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ أَصْلَحَ اللَّهُ مَا بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ النَّاسِ And whoever repairs what is between him and Allah, Allah will repair what is between him and the people. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَنْ كَانَتَ الدُّنْيَا هَمَّةً Whoever this world is his ambition, whoever makes this world his ambition, فَرَّقَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ شَمْلَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was scattered and disorganized his focus and his affairs for him. وَوَضَعَ الْفَقْرَ بَيْنَ عَيْنَيْهِ وَلَمْ يَأْتِيهِ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَا كُتِبَ لَهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place poverty right between his eyes as the focus of the person constantly. And nothing will come to him of this world except what has been written for him in a limited fashion. وَمَنْ كَانَتَ الْآخِرَةُ حَمَّةُ And whoever the hereafter was his ambition. جَمَعَ اللَّهُ وَلَهُ شَمْلَةُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gather his affairs for him. He will gather his focus for him. He will gather his umur. The scholars they say, meaning the affairs of his dunya, his family, his familiar, affair, his familiar affairs, and he, the affairs of his business and trade, so on and so forth, because he has made the hereafter. His ambition, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will give him focus over the entirety of his life. Jama Allahu lahu shamla. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gather his affairs for him. وَوَضَعَ الْغِنَاهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ And he will place contentment in his heart. وَأَتَتْهُ الدُّنْيَا وَهِيَ رَاهِمَةً And the dunya will be come to him and it will be compelled and forced to do so. And despite itself, the dunya will come to that person. And this explains to us the prosperity of the salaf who fled from the dunya while ran to them. And he had the condition of the Muslims today. And he who are being tested and tried not caring about whether their money is halal or haram, whether how they are earning it and spending it is halal or haram, and the likes of these affairs, and how Allah wa ta'ala, where they thought that they were honoring themselves by chasing after the dunya in a forbidden fashion, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has disgraced them, has become the means of their falling behind. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those yastami'un al-qawla fayattabi'un ahsana, to make us of those who hear what we hear and follow the best of what we heard, وآخر الدعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين May Allah Ta'ala reward our beloved and respected guest and increase him in goodness despite that he is traveling and just stopping through in Pittsburgh and despite some illnesses in his family that we ask Allah Ta'ala to be gracious with him and his family and to improve their health uh, our guest has allowed us to ask some questions uh, concerning this topic for a short time after the Salah. Right? So we'll establish the Salah at the time now, just so a minute or two late. And after the Salah, we'll have a time to, for whoever wishes to stay with us, to ask a question or two of the topic. Brothers, for a brief moment, Without overburdening our guest, insha'Allah ta'ala, we will begin with one question that I have for our guest on the topic, and then we'll open the floor, insha'Allah ta'ala. If there are concerns or questions on the topic that you'd like to have addressed, we will, insha'Allah, allow that. The, the question that I have related to our topic, and we've gained so much benefit from these words this evening, alhamdulillah, it is possible that someone may assume from what he's heard this evening about contemplation and reflection, especially in the West. 
there are people that may build on an understanding they have, and that is distance from the scholars, distance from knowledge, and reliance solely upon contemplation and reflection. And there are actually people that we've seen that may claim that they are deeply involved in contemplation, reflecting about matters of the hereafter, and they have not sought Islamic knowledge, they have not sought any guidelines, any principles, they have not gone to the scholars, nor, th nor have they attended in the lack of ability to do that, lect uh, lectures or lessons where knowledge is taught and principles are learned. So ihtirazan, so as to repel an assumption that could be made by those who did not really uh, focus well enough on what the goal of those words were, how can we repel this assumption that that might, the reflection, the contemplation might actually be in the place of knowledge or take the place of knowledge or be sufficient, free us of need of actually seeking knowledge, the actual, you know, ayat, learning the Qur'an, learning the ahadith and the principles as taught by our scholars. الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد and we mentioned we mentioned the tremendous statement of the great Imam of the Sunnah Ibn Qayyim in his book As-Sawaiq Al-Mursala where he said وَمَا مْتُحِنَ الْإِسْلَامُ بِمِحْنَ إِلَّا سَبَبُهَا التَّأْوِيلُ That the people of Islam, the religion has never been subjected to a great calamity except that the cause of it was misinterpretation of the religion. Misinterpretation of the names and the attributes of Allah, for example. Misinterpretation of the ahkam shar'iyya bahiya al-muharrama by coming up with all sorts of schemes and games to try to take the wealth of the people and they make the halal haram and to make any of the private parts that are impermissible any halal for a person and these sorts of things bending and twisting the text of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Ibn Qayyim he says in his Nuniya that the dima and the furuj the blood meaning the lives of people and the furuj and the private parts of the creation complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about such people is a tremendous statement from Rabia ibn Abdul Rahman, Rabia al Ra'i, teacher of Imam Malik, the great Imam from the Salaf. And on one occasion, Khatib al Baghdadi, he mentioned in Faqih al Wal Mutafaqih, and on one occasion, Rabia al Ra'i was sitting and he was weeping. And they said, Malaka adakhalat alayka musiba. And what is wrong has the calamity befallen you? And he said, لا ولكن تكلم في الإسلام من لا علم له فدخل في الدين شيء عظيم He said, no but rather people who speak about the religion without any knowledge and something terrible has happened to our religion. And so, in contemplating over knowledge and it's not for a person to just reach into any of the recesses of his empty mind I try to pull out something that doesn't exist inside of his mind and say, what does this mean? Vessel can only give what it holds. And a person who doesn't have something cannot give it. So if a person wants to know what is meant by a ayah, what is meant by a hadith, especially in the times in which we live, they have access to knowledge and the people of knowledge. They have access to the books of the scholars, they have access to the ulama and to the students of the ulama. And they can find what is meant by a particular affair. If they don't understand the particular meaning of a hadith, then until they know any with certain knowledge what is meant by a, by a particular text, then what is mandatory for them is a tawaqqaf. It's not to do anything until they understand. Not to do anything until they understand. To the point that a shatibi rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, الَّذِي يُقْدِمْ عَلَىٰ أَمْرٍ مِنَ الْأُمُورِ بِغَيْرِ مَعْرِفَةِ Any of the person who engages and advances towards any single affair without knowing any حُكْمِ اللَّهِ فِيهِ Without knowing the ruling of Allah ta'ala pertaining that particular affair, 
فَهُوَ مُتَّبِعُ لِهَوَاهُ And this person is a follower of his desires. This person is a follower of his desires. This is, a, this is something very dangerous. And in as much as that, the wordings of the religion, and they are the modes of their meanings, then they must be understood في عرف الشرح And they must be understood according to the language of the Arabs, for example, during the time of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they have to go back to the understanding of the early generations of Islam to see what was understood by them. And does their understanding match up with what is found by the scholars of the past and the scholars at present pertaining a particular affair? Otherwise, a person can take something and he can misapply it. He doesn't understand the limitations and the parameters of a certain concept. And the Islam has come with justice, Islam has come with mercy, Islam has come with kindness, it has come with good dealings with the neighbors, so on and so forth. If a person doesn't understand the boundaries of those things, and he, what, what those concepts apply to, what they don't apply to, and a person can take any affair of the religion and misapply it in a way that is hated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ash-Shatibi, likewise in his book, Al-I'tisam, he mentioned that there are three ways of ihdath al deen three ways that people introduce new things into Islam. He said the first is al-jahl. He said the first is ignorance. And then he categorized ignorance in two categories. He said the first is and he jahl and he with what is called ulum al-ala and he wasail al-ilm. And he included in that is and he ignorance of the Arabic language. Ignorance of, a Arabic, of the Arabic language. A person and he, we find the statements of the Salaf and the Ahla Ketum al Ujma that they, they said about certain people who held certain positions that were strange and weird. He said they were destroyed by their Ujma. They were destroyed by their and the lack of understanding the Arabic language. And he so these affairs are very dangerous. Any a person engaging in trying to understand the text, and we find people taking the translation of books, taking the translation of books, taking translated fatwas and applying them to situations they don't even apply to. Finding their, thinking themselves to be any mustaghni, and to be free of need of anyone else. They don't need anyone else. I don't need anyone else's understanding. And this is without a doubt a musibah. It's a calamity. Ash-Shatibi rahimullah ta'ala, he said outside of, and he, the ignorance of, and he wasail al-ilm. And the means of knowledge, the knowledge that are the means to the goal, to help you understand the meanings of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, like the knowledge of the Arabic language and these sorts of things, and the knowledge of religious principles. He said, I was called ilm al maqasid and the knowledge of the main wisdoms and uh, meanings of the religion of Allah wa Ta'ala, the ma'ani and the hikam, and the main meanings that everything goes back to the fundamentals of the religion. And he, meaning the usul of the religion. And he, people being ignorant about these sorts of affairs are the things that cause people to fall into being classified into the 72 sects that are threatened with the fire. And he, a person has a mukhalafah in the usul. And he has an opposition in the usul. Wa yusirru ala khatai. And he persists upon his mistake after it is clarified to him, so on and so forth. This person is in a destructive condition. He said, likewise, from the things that causes ahdath al deen it causes people to introduce things into the religion that are connected to this issue. And he is ihsan al-dhan bil The overestimation of the intellect. Overestimating the intellect. Thinking well of a person's own intellect. And the religion does not follow behind the intellects of the people. But rather the intellects follow according to the religion. And a person cannot have a concept and then look for the evidence to support his understanding after he already has his understanding, but rather his understanding must come from any strong understanding, a valid understanding of the text to begin with. The third cause that he mentions is ittiba'ul hawa, is just the mere following of desires. The mere following of desires. And he says, everything that has been introduced into Islam, it came from one of these three directions. And so this is what comes about by people taking a deviant approach to the branches of the knowledge of Islam and to the fundamentals of the knowledge of Islam by taking a mystical approach 
of dreams and visions and so on and so forth are taking any a philosophical or any what they think is a, a intellectual approach and these sorts of things. And it leads to misguidance at every turn that a person takes. And so without a doubt this is nowhere found in what is meant by the speech of Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala and the writings of, of Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala are probably some of the most exhaustive and extensive in writings in refuting such a concept. You even mentioned the narration of the, one of the Salaf that was thinking deeply about the Sirat. So he's thinking right. about a matter that right. has its academic basis for right. texts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if we have questions, concerns on the topic, I have a question from our sisters that is off topic, which will keep until Friday, inshallah ta'ala. On topic from elders and guests. So the question, the gist of the question is any, an advice pertaining any the parents who provide their children with harmful entertainment, harmful objects, harmful any forms of amusement and so on and so forth. And just a general advice pertaining that. And he wants the damage is done, how to go about repairing the damage. There's a tremendous statement in the book Tuhatul Wadul fi Akamil Wulud Ibn Qayyim Rahimullah Ta'ala and he mentions and how many people mistreated their children when they were young and so their children mistreat them when they become elderly. You know, this is something that without a doubt any a person never finds ever in their life. And this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they ever try to do something that they think is beneficial in a way that is haram except that they're going to be tested with the opposite of what they intended and so whereas they intended to any busy the children away perhaps from something else or from bothering them or these sorts of things and you know, where they intended to bring happiness to the child they really bring sadness to the child where they intend to make the child think that Islam and it is not something restrictive in reality I mean, they demonstrate that Islam is not something serious to the child and so the child doesn't take the religion seriously and perhaps will grow up to be a person that either is lackadaisical with their religion or a person who doesn't want to be Muslim at all may Allah protect all of us so this is a serious affair and he, Ibn Qayyim in his tremendous book he has a lengthy section where he explained that there is nothing whatsoever that Allah has forbidden. There is nothing whatsoever that Allah has forbidden that the people may think has some benefit in it. Except that He has given us Bada'il and Halal He has given us halal alternatives. He has given us halal alternatives. And the halal alternatives for us. And he, for many of these things, are wholesome things, very nourishing things. And there is a there is a great deal that is available to nourish the minds of the youth, even the kufar themselves. And he, when they have written in their research paper and their analysis and so on and so forth, of youth that spend a lot of time on social media, or youth that spend a lot of time uh, listening to music or playing video games and these sorts of things that lead to destructive behaviors that the kufar themselves admit are destructive behaviors that come from these sorts of things. And then they have said that this comes from a need that's not being met. That these children, the kufar understand this, that these children, the reason that they're spending so much time on social media, on Facebook and on Instagram and Twitter and so on and so forth, is because of a need that's not being met. It's because of a connection, a bond that's not there between the parent and the child. And that there's not a relationship that's wholesome that where they're thriving. And so they they have this need that's unmet. They have this need that's unmet. And so they try to fill in the void. They try to fill in the void. And whether that void is something connected to a relationship or it's an intellectual curiosity where you can direct their minds towards something that is beneficial. You directed their minds towards something that is destructive. It's some type of need that's not being met. So this is without a doubt something that the Kufar, they recognize these things in hindsight, in their social science, and their psychology, and so on and so forth. It's all uh, reactive. 
and they're reacting after a calamity has already fallen and they're saying, you know, what is the cause of this? We have the solutions before these things ever, these problems ever existed. Found in the words of Allah and the words of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So there are halal alternatives. There are halal alternatives, especially with the breaking of the weather. Any zoos and parks and any museums that have halal things that a person can look at and all sorts of things. A person can be creative. A person can be creative. I mean, find something that their child is interested in, you know, that's conducive to their future. I mean, what do you want to do with your life? What are your interests? A child has an interest in animals. You know, a child has an interest in science. A child has an interest in any certain, a child has an interest in history. There are historical sites all over the place. Any, there are any uh, books available, uh, courses available. A child has an interest in, in art. You know, and it says of drawing faces and things with living souls and so on and so forth. And there are all sorts of directions that you could point a person towards. But it just takes the parent caring. And not, a, not even an, a, to an obsessive degree, just caring enough. And this is the thing. A lot of people, they are very lazy-minded and intellectually bankrupt. They don't want to think. And if it was something that affected their finances, for example, if it was something that, okay, we need to be resourceful and find out a creative method to take care of something that's missing in the payment of the bills every month, they're going to figure it out. They're going to figure out something connected to their dunya. But their child at the same time, and they just say, oh, you know, just be quiet and watch some cartoons. Be quiet and you know, play a video game. Be quiet and they give them a gadget, they give them a gizmo, they give them something. And this is, any has fallen in many mahadiyya. So this is a calamity in these times, any that so much is available of the tools of self-destruction to the parents. And when you give somebody this sort of thing, at least to the next thing. At least to the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. So a person is a search for halal alternatives and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know that if they fear Allah, Allah will make a way out for them. Can we give an advice to the sisters that feel a need to go out unnecessarily? And they're following the pattern of people that are other people that are Muslims. They see other people and they're going out frequently or people that are non-Muslims and they feel the pressure, they feel a need to go out unnecessarily and to leave from the home unnecessarily and these sorts of things. Alhamdulillah, the woman who has, especially if she has children, especially if she has children, she has the luxury of staying home. Because many of your sisters don't have that same luxury. Many sisters are in situations where they have to leave outside of the home and from the company of their children. They have to leave and they have to go out frequently to the workplace and to try to make ends meet and these sorts of things. And these sisters would, many of them would love to be in your situation. They would love to be in your situation. They would love to be in a scenario where they can be at home except for that which is important or that which is necessary. And we say from that which is necessary. As was mentioned, when we were in Medina recently with our Shaykh Abdullah al-Bukhari, may Allah preserve him, and there are outings, are permissible, that you could take your family, you could take your wife outside of the home to halal places, to see any certain sites, to enjoy certain things. And we said in the last advice, to be creative, any these sorts of things. A person should limit themselves to that which is beneficial. They should limit themselves to what is beneficial. And, he, and not get involved in and he leaving the house in a way that is not conducive to the progress of the family because usually leaving the house involves spending money. And a lot of times it involves spending money unnecessarily. And most people don't have extra money to spend like that. And so this contributes to all sorts of problems. It contributes to all sorts of difficulties. And it contributes to, you know, uh, many impermissible matters of the wife spending the wealth of the husband without his permission. It leads to arguments and disputation and these sorts of things. And it leads to a person and he roaming about the streets unnecessarily. The hadith of Imran ibn Hussein, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
He said, إِيَّاكُمْ الْجُلُوسِ فَالْتُرُقَاتِ I warn you of sitting in the streets. He said, يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ مَا لَنَا بُدٌ مِنْ مَجَالِسِنَا مَنْ أَتَحَدَّثُ فِيهَا يعني We need to sit and, and, and congregate. This was the men in this case. He said, وَأَمَّا إِذَا أَبَيْتُمْ He said, if you, any, if, there's, any, if you refuse to not congregate in the streets, meaning if you say that you have to, and this, here speaking to the men, he said, فَعَتُوا تَرِيقَ حَقَّ He said, give the right to the street. Give the right of the pathway to the pathway. What was the first thing? Who knows? غَضُ الْبَصَرِ Lowering the gazes. Right? Lowering the gazes. That's the first, any of the mahadiyah, shar'iyah, that comes about from leaving from the home. There's all sorts of filth that a person's eye falls upon, and there's all sorts of any mughriyat, all sorts of temptations. And he, a person, and the Prophet وسلم, and he advises and he ordered us to look at those that are beneath us when it comes to the dunya, and don't look at those who have more than us, and these sorts of things. When she leaves from the home, and we see it, not just with American women, with the Arab sisters, with the any African sisters, and so on and so forth. The sister, she leaves from the home, she goes to the home of another sister, or she goes to the home of a disbeliever who's taking out loans and interest and has credit card debts and so on and so forth and they have every new appliance and they have any furniture that is bought on interest payments and cars that are bought on interest payments and anything that they want they just charge it they just charge it to a card and the woman she comes home to her meager belongings to her meager surroundings and so on and so forth and she starts to feel something in her chest she starts to feel as though she doesn't have something that she should be able to have, or she's been deprived of some type of right, some type of standard of living that she just invented for herself just now. And she complains and she gets upset. You know? She says, you know, these sisters, they have degrees. These sisters, they, you know, have left their homes and they've got dual masters and doctor degrees and so on and so forth. Where are their children? Where are their children? What is the condition of their children? Leaving their children to disbelieving uh, daycares, so on and so forth. Any care workers watching over the children or irreligious Muslims watching over the children. And the disconnect is made between the parent and the child. And you think that and on the outside it looks like a na'mah. And in the bottom, al-amr is adab. And in the reality of the fair under the surface is torment. They're in a miserable condition. So people, they... And he become obsessive from leaving, and he obsessed with leaving the home unnecessarily, so on and so forth. It has many, and he harms. The woman is under the, and he guidance and direction of her husband. And the husband, he should be creative in finding some halal alternatives, as we said, for her to enjoy herself, for her to get outside of the home. And he, the person who does that, and they suffice himself with the halal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them qana'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them Satisfaction, you will be amazed. And you put the, the kufar, they think that the Muslim home is a sad, miserable place where the women are confined to some dark, you know, chambers and so on and so forth. Hey, alhamdulillah, those people have homes that are built on that principle. And even when you try to take the family out, and you say, let's go do something, let's go outside of the house, eh, we're okay. We, we don't have anything you wanna do, we want to do. You haven't done anything for weeks. You haven't left the house. What would you like to do? Comfortable at home. Comfortable at home, there's not much that we want to do. It's like Allah khair for the offer. You know? A person is given qana'ah. Alhamdulillah. Most people, their, their minds are just, you know, they have tashawuf, ishtiyaq. Right? They're just always wanting to see something new and and busy themselves, it's a, they call it attention deficit disorder. People just want something else to grab their attention, to overstimulate them, so on and so forth. And it's a mental weakness. That's a mental weakness. Eh? An intelligent woman, an intelligent and a Muslim woman. And she doesn't need that. She doesn't need that. She fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She knows that what Allah has ordered is that which is sa'ada, that which will bring her happiness. For those people who must take their families out sometimes here and there, not to encourage a whole lot of outings. But there are things that we've overlooked here in the city of Pittsburgh, many beautiful natural places and parks. 
that are free and that will occupy you for one to two hours with activities like walking and seeing the beauty of nature, the beauty of Allah's creation and so on. And to be honest, after returning to this country after 16 years, I've noticed that the attendance of non-Muslims to these places is extremely low compared to what it used to be. The non-Muslims are all involved in their internet and their tablets and their, their at-home entertainment, their cable and all of the things that they have. Today, by Allah's permission, I went to a park here and spent the day with my family. We saw turtles swimming. We saw goldfish that were huge. We saw ducks and geese jumping into water. We saw buffaloes and we saw turkey. We're not at the zoo, at one of the parks. Turkeys, buffaloes, and all of the things I mentioned to you. Absolutely free. We packed the celery and carrots, sticks, and all kinds of things. Absolutely free, except for the money we spent on food to go out. We went in the early morning, where it's not a popular time for the non-Muslims to go out, so no one's out there, you know, uh, dressed horribly and so on. We went to a park that has groves, and we took a grove, and we walked all around, tired ourselves out, and had a wonderful day. Absolutely free. We need to rediscover the area. The, what, the place I went today, what was it called? Anyone know? Buffaloes. Where can you find a buffalo game reserve in Pittsburgh, huh? With turkeys and turtles and all that stuff. South Park. South Park Game Reserve. Right? That was about half an hour south. Right? There's another place called Round Hill Park. Again, south. Round Hill Park has a pet uh, petting farm. They have sheep. They have horses. They have cows. You can walk up to them and pet them. Kids love it. Right? And on that farm, there are other animals just walking about. There are, you know, lots of things to see there. And then there are, on the other side of that park, there are groves and places to stop for a picnic lunch and for little children to play on swings and slides and things like that. So we have beautiful opportunities that we sort of lost track of with all the technology and all the, you know, all the possibilities of spending money on different things. We've lost track that there are so many different things that are free and really wholesome. Subhanallah. And if it must be that you spend money, then go on off hours to places like mini golf courses, you know, where the non-Muslims are not there and they're not playing music and things like that. Go in the mornings and early afternoons on weekdays, you know, go to a bowling alley and bowl outside of the party times, outside of the evenings and things like that, an early afternoon or an early morning when it's open, right? And at a place that's, you know, safe and a place that has you know, uh, these kinds of activities for, you know, small amounts of money, not great, large losses, financial losses, right? And as mentioned, the zoo and other places. We have these things. Alhamdulillah. Now, do you remember the question of our brother, Abu Mardi? Barakallah. Well, we'll take the last question for the evening, fearing, as I mentioned, overburdening our guest, and then we'll close out our program, inshallah, for the evening. Alhamdulillah, Abu Maryam, Allah preserve him. He asked a question about Muslim business owners. I mean, who obviously a person who is a business manager, a business uh, proprietor, a uh, person who runs a business, takes a lot of time to do so. Takes a lot of time away from them. And they may feel as though they are not focusing on other things that, as much as they would like to focus on. So, just as a question. Alhamdulillah, what can they do to establish? I mean, with what they have, something for the hereafter. We mentioned in our sittings in Columbus, the last sitting that we had, something tremendous by Ibn Al-Qayyim from his book, Tariq Al-Hijratayn, and he about tazahum al-wajibat, and when you have many things that you want to do, many duties that kind of clash with each other sometimes, you can't do all of them at the same time. The person should make the intention to do all of them, any all those things. Any like for example, the person he makes the intention to seek knowledge to the best of his ability. However, his schedule doesn't really permit his seeking knowledge as much as he would as much as he would like to review in Quran and these sorts of things as much as he would like to. But he makes the intention that when he has the free time, he's going to do so. And that way he's rewarded for his intention. At the same time, he uses his wealth in creative ways 
in ways that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish what is necessary to establish. From what is necessary to establish, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith reported from Harwa by his aunt Aisha radiallahu anha. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered with the establishment masajid everywhere that they are needed. And we know what it takes to complete an obligation is an obligation. So from that which is necessary for the establishment of masajid, any other bills, the utilities of the masajid, any likewise from those marafid, from those institutions that are required in the communities are the building of Islamic schools, the erecting of Islamic schools, any of these things require strategizing, planning, they may take years to come into fruition. They require resources, they, they require a lot of thought. They require a lot of thought behind them, so they're not done haphazardly. There is a lot that can be done. And there are students of knowledge that are overseas that are in dire need of support. And, he, and in doing that, he gets the reward of seeking knowledge to the best of his ability. And he gets the reward of any what those students are learning overseas, sitting with the scholars that he is supporting and helping. And he gets the reward of any what is occurring in the masjid, in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dalu ala khair kafa'ilihi person who helps and directs the people towards the good, it's like the person who does it himself. Nuqayim rahimullah ta'ala and he said in his nuniyah he said, هَذَا وَنَصْرُ دِينِي فَرُضٌ وَاجِبٍ in the qatima and he said that aiding the religion is something that is an obligation. Aiding the religion aiding the deen, فَرُضٌ wajib. لَا لِلْكِفَايَةِ بَلْ عَلَى الْعَيَادِ not just for some of the people, but as faradun ayn, as upon every able-bodied, mature Muslim, bil yad wa inna bilisan, fa in ajasta fa bi tawajjuhi wa dua bi janani, and he, it is mandatory to do so with the hand physically, and he included with the yad is in fact, and in yad al-uliya, khayrun min al-yad al-sufla, and the upper hand is better than the lower hand al-yad in the Arabic language refers to a number of things from that is in fact is spending. The path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, especially for Ashab al Sunnah, for the business owners that are Salafiyun, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and he to support to the best of their ability the Masajid and everything connected to the Dawah in their locations and so on and so forth is from the most important of affairs so that any of the people of Sunnah are not in need of anyone else. As was stated by Abdullah ibn Mubarak, he said, اللهم لا تجعل لصاحبي بدعة عندي يدا فيحبه قلبي Oh Allah, never allow the person of innovation to have an upper hand above me, meaning ينفق عليا Never put me in a situation where I need money from a مبتريع I need money from an innovator فيحبه قلبي Out of fear that my heart would start to love and incline towards that person so this is a tremendous favor if Allah has put a person in a situation that they have wealth to spend for the sake of Allah to spread the da'wah to the sunnah and to aid everything that is connected to the call to the sunnah. This is something that is needed and something that alhamdulillah is increasing more and more as the years go on and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enrich the Muslims from his bounty from risk that is halal and tayyib and mubarakan and from sustenance that is blessed and that is permissible. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to make us of those people that Ibn Qayyim mentions when he says any yani, that supporting the deen is fardun wajib. Those people that understand it's mandatory for everyone to support the religion. And yani, not just some of the people, but every Muslim in the community is to support the call to Islam how but yet. First and foremost with the hand, with his physical abilities, with his skills, and yani, if he if he has money to spend his money, wa imma bilisan. Or either with the tongue, meaning he orders the good and forbids the evil according to what he knows, he advises the Muslims for the sake of Allah. And then if you are unable to do either, if you don't have enough information and knowledge and understanding to order the good and forbid the evil, and give nasiha in a certain situation, or you don't have the physical resources and the wealth to help the da'wah, فَبِدْ تَوَجُّهُ and he then with a tawajjuh, and he with directing your heart towards the good, and he having iradat al khair, and he intention for the good. What dua bi janani, and he with the directing of the heart, and the dua that comes sincerely from the heart. And he a person, he directs his heart towards the good. He connects his heart to the house of Allah, towards the, and he connects his heart to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he makes dua sincerely. 
But Allah tabarak wa ta'ala yansurul haq wa ahla That he helps the truth of the people of the truth uh, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Reward the brothers here in this masjid And alhamdulillah it's my first time here uh, Thrilled to be here Azakumullah khaira Alhamdulillah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To unite our hearts upon the good To make us of those any people who and he love each other sincerely for his sake and cooperate sincerely and advise one another sincerely for his sake. And we say, any that you have been blessed here in the city to have the presence of our brother Abul Abbas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase him and preserve him. And we encourage the people to come out and attend the lessons and to benefit and not be negligent. This is what Allah ta'ala has made easy for us. We thank him and we praise him for the benefits that we have. Uh, enjoyed this evening. I, re- I reiterate the special